We're rolling. Are we rolling? Yeah. My hair look great. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so today we're talking about pre-performance routines. Uh, we're just going to start by kind of defining what a pre-performance routine is. So pre-performance routine uh, for most weightlifters and powerlifters will be what you're going to do in the kind of 20 or 30 seconds leading up to you lifting the bar. So in weightlifting, uh, we have like a 60 second clock, it's the same in powerlifting, where you'll usually have a beep or you'll get a call, you'll walk up to the bar, and then it's in that space when you're kind of addressing the bar, what you're going to be doing. So there's three usual kind of components to a pre-performance routine. The first one is arousal. So that's a kind of level of uh, stimulation. So are you very, very relaxed? Or are you super hyped up? So that might take the form of uh, listening to music before you lift. It might be something like we'll see weightlifters stamping their feet on the floor as they're walking onto the platform. Or it might be like a kind of audible outburst. It might be like a shout or something like that. So the arousal will come from things within ourselves so we could have been preparing the session thinking about the session in our head maybe doing some mental imagery work beforehand it can come from the environment we're in so you'll see a lot of the time people will go to seminars and they'll hit like big PRs at the seminar just because the environment is so amped up and then they become like a higher level of arousal than they'd have in training or it could just be that you have like a really really good attitude so all those things are adding into the levels of arousal we have before we go to lift the bar and that's a component to your pre-performance routine. The second component then is behavior. So the, beha or the behavioral components are the kind of steps you take. So it's, uh, I walk up to a barbell, I grab it with my right hand, I grab it with my left hand, I might raise my hips up and away from the bar. These are all behavioral steps and those are mainly kind of physical things that will prepare us uh, or prepare like our physiology to lift the bar. So a lot of the time you'll see somebody raising up their hamstrings and going and that's just activating their uh, those kind of muscle fibers just before they're going or maybe getting a small bit of a stretch reflex. The last thing then is attentional control. So a lot of the time pre-performance routines are used to combat choking in a sports environment. So it might be uh, if you're taking like the putt to win some golf competition, you'll really focus on your pre-performance routine to stop you uh, having heightened levels of anxiety and maybe like choking and missing the putt. So people a lot of time will think attentional control is about uh, blocking everything out. A lot of the time that's not how it will be in like an elite sport situation. A lot of the time it will just be a thing of refocusing rather than narrowing your, uh, your band of attention. So. If I'm at a competition and there's a load of people in front of me in the crowd, the last thing I want to do for my pre-performance routine is think, there's nobody in the room, I'm just going to be lifting this on my own. What you need to do then is just have some sort of a strategy, so a lot of the time you'll see people walking out onto the platform and they'll pick a point on the wall in front of them, and that's a good strategy for attentional control. So it's rather than blocking everything out, you're accepting what's there in front of you, but you have a strategy to deal with that uh, kind of lack of attention. So we just saw Owen going through his pre-performance routine there. ended up being a snatch pull. So you can see the kind of three steps. So we had the level of arousal, his kind of behavior surrounding the lift, and then his attentional control. Obviously this is a very, very light lift, so his pre-performance routine mightn't have been as long, or mightn't have been as intricate as it would be for maybe 150 or 155. But we can still see the kind of main component. So in terms of levels of arousal, Owen doesn't have these huge amounts of kind of extrinsic things stimulating him. So he usually won't have music on when he's training. He won't be uh, kind of like psyching himself up before he goes to lift. Most of the time he's just kind of chatting. You'll see him walking up to the bar being very, very relaxed. And his attitude is always kind of relaxed. This is just another training session. So the second thing then is his kind of behavioral steps. So it's always the same. He was lifting with straps. So he kind of sits down onto the bar. He gets himself set. 
it's always one hand and then the other hand and this is very very consistent over the course of every single lift then you'll start seeing things like this so he raises his hips he comes in and tightens raises his hips comes in and tightens he does that twice before he goes to lift and what you're seeing there is those kind of physiological cues so he's pulling his shoulders back and actively cueing it in his head so it's not just him saying shoulders back he does the movement twice so he can have the feeling of it we spoke earlier about it being like a multi-sensory thing it's not just you do physical actions it's not just you say something in your head you want to get as many different kind of feelings or pieces of stimulus into it as you possibly can or as, as wide a range so it's nice and simple he gets his hand set he raises his hips twice and then he does the lift the last thing in terms of attentional control it's not an issue here today because the gym is empty but a lot of the time you'll see people will walk in front of him and most of the times that happens if Owen's getting set up he'll just stop take a step back and wait until that goes away so that's just the thing of he understands that this is all part of his pre-performance routine he doesn't have to change something or he doesn't have to slightly avert his eyes if somebody is standing straight in front of him he's prepared and that's just all about what these pre-performance routines are for be prepared for the situation so you can be consistent over the course of many many training sessions and then when you go to competition you're going to be prepared to perform